Hi guys, I'm Roshna Dhan. I'm uh, Director of Product Management for InfoSight at uh, Nimble Storage and HPE. Um, as Rod mentioned, InfoSight impacts many different functions within a company. It uh, impacts support. Predict uh, the predictive analytics brings you know, very interesting capabilities to support it is behind our, our, our new support. It also helps engineering. Engineering knows very quickly how the product is behaving in the field so they can learn and quickly make changes to our software whether it is changing algorithms for compression or is it changing algorithms for how the file system works. It's very um, useful for sales. Uh, you know, our sales get leads from InfoSight as do our resellers. And then of course it's very important for marketing. We know how people are using our products. But what I'm going to show you is just a small glimpse of the customer facing portal. That is where customers log into InfoSight and solve their very complex problems. Bear with me a minute while it comes up. So this is how you go to InfoSight. Of course, it's on the cloud, publicly accept, um, accessible. So what I'll show you is um, really um, VM vision which is, as Rod described, the ability to monitor across the stack and correlate across the stack. Like it was mentioned, 50% of the problems that get reported to us as a storage vendor have nothing to do with storage. A lot of it is VMware, a lot of it is network. At the same time, you know, we don't want to let the customer down because all that the customer cares about is that his application is available and performant. He does not care where in the stack that problem is coming from, where that weakest link is. And the stack is pretty tall. You have storage, you have network, uh, you have the physical server itself, you have maybe ESX hypervisor, you have virtual machine and you have an operating system in the virtual machine and, uh, and applications inside that. So our goal is to go all the way to the top. We don't have applications with, within virtual machines yet or the operating system, but we go all the way to the virtual machines. And that's the view I want to show you. So I'll go to one of the nimble um, IT virtual machines. Now, remember how people solve the problems today. So today, if there is a problem for application is running slow, what does the vendor do? Uh, the, the, the admin, they have to call the vendor for each layer they have to collect information from each layer, send it to the vendor, juggle between their support, or for themselves, collect this information and correlate it themselves. And often, the person responsible for each layer sits in a different silo. It's a nightmare to figure out when you own all you know is the application is running slow. It's a nightmare to figure out where in the stack that problem was. And that is the problem that we are making very simple. So this is the InfoSight portal where the customer logs in. And in there, I go to VM Vision. And under VM Vision, uh, let's imagine a scenario. Say the application that the person owns is, is FTP, and he says, my FTP server is down. I know FTP performance isn't that, uh, that critical, but it just does illustrate the point. So what the admin will do is they'll come in here, and they'll type FTP, and it shows you a virtual machine. I pull up this virtual machine, and I quickly look at what the latency is. As you know, latency is the response time in, in the storage lingo. Uh, nobody likes high response times. And I see here, oh, the, my response time for that virtual machine, which is really a proxy for the application response time often, is very high. But what we quickly show you, as you see here in the, in the blue, black, and green, is the breakup for that end-to-end -end virtual machine to show you where it's coming from. In this specific peak, most of the latency is actually coming from host. Hardly any from network and just a little bit from storage. This very quickly, very simply, tells the admin, hey, something is wrong with your host. That's where you need to look. Just getting to this point can take a lot of manual uh, labors, a lot of skill, and also a lot of data collection, et cetera. Now that you know it's, uh, it's in the host, you scroll down, and you look at, look at that physical host, the ESX server. In this case, we see that memory utilization is pretty high on the server. And uh, you know, CPU is doing OK, but the memory is high. So then the, the next question is, so who's hogging all that memory? So you go very quickly, and you do what we call a noisy neighbor analysis. So you, I click here. It wants me to select at what point I want to do that analysis. And this is the point I've chosen. 
And now it will show you, it's at analyzing VM neighbors. These are the virtual machines that are uh, sharing a common resource with my original virtual machine that the problem was reported for. These virtual machines could potentially make an impact. Of course, in this case, you can see the IOPS is small, so these virtual machines are kind of slow as well. They're not doing much. So the conclusion from here could be maybe my ESX server is just short on memory. You know, the physical memory is too little because even though my virtual machines are not doing much, the memory utilization is high. So now I might decide, you know what, I'm going to uh, take this critical FTP um, virtual machine, which is mission critical for me, and move it maybe to a different server where there's more capacity, more headroom. So that I can now, which server do I move it to? I can quickly find that out by going and seeing, looking at the servers. And it'll give me a clear view of which servers I should go to. These are all the ESX servers in that cluster. And then I can see which of the servers, look at the memory column, which of the server has the most headroom for memory. Maybe it's the one that has 50%, you know, et cetera. Uh, and then I can move my VM there. So this is the power of cross-stack management and very complex troubleshooting that is at the tips of the fingers uh, for people. And how we come up with a lot of this is through analytics in the background. The other thing I'd point out, I know I'm not on the mic, but you can see that in that right-hand column, that top server that has, has the high memory utilization actually has a balloon file being created, which again indicates that you're uh, running into memory uh, issues there and then probably impacting things. Thanks, Rob. The last thing that I'll show you is this view, which is a very quick view on a, of your entire uh, VMware storage environment. The big squares are the data stores, which is you know the storage that goes um, sort of the LUN in VMware terms. Within the data stores, the smaller squares are the virtual machines, each of these. So these are really virtual machines with VMDKs within that LUN, and they can, in the, within the data store, they could compete for resources. So the size of the square shows you how much IOPS is going on, and the color of the virtual machine, the intensity of the red shows you what the latency is. And so very quickly, you can pinpoint into the specific virtual machine that may be causing a problem, indicating that that is a person who may be picking up the phone and calling you. Uh, as, as, the, as the storage admin. We have a joke that we say for storage administrators, they are guilty uh, unless proven innocent. So when there is a, when there's an issue with an application, because the storage admin is at the bottom of the stack, they get usually called and said, you know, you need to fix this. Um, and in the smaller environments, the IT generalist, IT orgs are changing these days. It's not as siloed as it used to be. What the CIO really wants these days is he wants replaceable IT generalists that don't need specific skills and infrastructure. And when that happens, you need simpler uh, visualizations and simpler ways to show them how they can solve the problems.